Now, here is an example of um, an imperfect cadence. Now, imperfect cadences for bark or this type of thing um, are unusual. And in the actual exam, they don't use, I don't think I've seen an imperfect cadence. They always tend to be perfect cadences. However, don't assume. Always, always bear the imperfect cadence in mind, okay? Now, if you do get the imperfect cadence, the problem with an imperfect cadence is you can't demonstrate um, your extra skills such as using 5-7 or 2-B-7 or a cadential 6-4. So you're going to have to get your stylistic marks somewhere else. Now, your stylistic marks are going to be gained by adding pass notes and recognising things um, that, for example, here, you were given the four chords. This note was added. Now, it is absolutely suggesting that it is a passing note and it is passing to somewhere and it is passing to a D. Now, if you don't make this note a D, you will lose the mark because you haven't recognised that this is a passing note. So you've got to look out for little things like that. Passing notes will get you extra stylistic marks. So you need to be looking out for thirds, intervals of thirds between each melodic line. Now, this, I mean, at a glance, this was the only one that kind of jumped out at me. Can I just also point out that you never use a passing note on the last two chords of a cadence, okay? If you have to use passing notes, use them for the first three chords. Now, I've given an example of consecutive fifths, and I've put down here to avoid. If you have consecutive fifths or consecutive octaves, you will lose a stylistic mark. Now, a consecutive fifth or octave, if you look at this chord four, you've got here an interval between the bass and the tenor of a fifth. Then you look at the next chord, a chord six, and you will notice that between the bass and the tenor, you've got a fifth. So you have what we call consecutive, of, uh, consecutive fifths. So these are fifths in a row. You must not use them. You need to avoid them. Now, one way of avoiding them is trying to keep the alto and the tenor lines pretty static, as I've done here, so no big leaps or anything, um, and not all going up or going down. Because if you look at the here between the bass line, it is ascending, and you look at the soprano line, at it, and it is descending. That is one device or technique to avoid having um, consecutive fifths or octaves between the soprano and the bass. So just think about that. When you're writing your lines, and this is a stylistic thing, try, if you can, don't get too caught up in it, but try to have an ascending, um, one line ascending, one line descending. Okay, and we call that consecutive motion. Now, um, the other thing I need to point out is the leading note. Now, the leading note in this particular example is an E sharp. And you have to make sure, obviously, that that E sharp is raised if you are in a minor key, which we are, or lowered if we are in a major key. Now, obviously, this E sharp isn't going anywhere um, because it's the last chord. So there's not an awful lot you can do about that one. And also, it is an imperfect cadence, so it's supposed to sound up in the air. But the thing about the leading note is if that you don't resolve it, it causes problems with the ear and you don't quite know um, where it's resolving to. And it's stylistically, you will lose a mark. So the first thing that you need to be mindful of, find out what... The leading note is in any key so in this example and then try and in the example here either lower it or raise it okay